ladies and gentlemen and zeers and theys and everybody's. <laughs> That's none of our business, how you categorize your pronouns and how you build your sentences. But welcome, welcome, gather round, gather round. This is RPT, season number four, episode 42. And uh, man, I'm, 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 I'm coming in hot, Rob. You are coming in very hot. I glanced over the stuff that we're going to talk about. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And my mind is kind of blown on some of this. I like so it. So we got producer Rob in the building. How's it going, everybody? I am fresh back from New Braunfels, sold out. Thank you guys so much. Amazing turnout. Was that Goofy's again? Yes. Love Goofy's. That's and a cool spot. They made it bigger. They expanded. It's like, whew. no. Yeah. They added to that building or is it another building? It's like added on to the building. Dope. So very cool. Shout out to everybody that drove in. A lot of uh, RPT patrons. and Yeah? Yeah. Captains and <clears throat> Orale. I'm, I'm a member of the Tia, homie. I love it. <laughs> they knew the secret handshake and everything. Das, 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 das. Now some people are like, what? There's a handshake? Oh, yeah. Some of y'all already know the handshake. But, uh, but yeah, man, excited to be back on the road. We got a couple tour dates real quick. We have Colleen, Texas, and Lubbock, Texas. That's this weekend. So uh, April 9th, April 10th, Colleen, April 11th, Lubbock. Corpus Christi, May 20th through the 22nd. Then we have Ontario, California, July 14th, Califas. Oxnard, California, July 15th. And uh, a whole bunch more, man. Hit yep. up chingobling.com and get your tickets. Por favor, believe it. Yeah. Sass. All right, now to get into the episode. Uh, <laughs> where to start, right? But uh, mm-hmm. go back to the show real quick. How, how was it being back at Goofy's? I mean, it's been two years at this point, I guess, since you did in Braunfels. Yeah, you're right. Because um, nothing happened last year. Yeah, yeah. They were, uh, the owners are really cool. And they were telling us about some of the local politics. Yeah. You know, like throughout 2020, how they were trying to shut them down and... They were sticking to their guns, man. They were like, nah, you need to holler at this judge and I'm going to see you at that courthouse. Fuck yeah. And uh, yeah, it's crazy because, you know, around that Canyon Lake area, it's, you know, they thrive off of tourism. Right. So like Easter or Fourth of July or what, Labor Day and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, my soul says she used to go there floating, you know, Mm -hmm. for years as a a young wild cat going out there, drinking, having a good time. Young whippersnapper. Young whippersnapper. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, I've seen a lot of videos, a lot more videos of people kind of having a what, like a collective uprising of like, we're not taking this shit anymore. Like, bring the fines, you know, bring your mandates or whatever. I'll see you in court. None of it's gonna stand. Which this should have happened ten months ago, you know. But it's better, uh, better now than never. Yeah, and it's a symptom of the shit we've been talking about. Yeah, which is the mainstream narrative. Sometimes, depending on how you view the world, what type of filter, what lens you view the world, it might start to sound like bullshit to you. Yep. You know, your bullshit detectors start going off. And when you start looking at it from an economic lens. You're right. And you're thinking, okay, are we really about to fuck up our economy? Right. Like, what's your number? How, like, how many deaths did there have to be for somebody to be like... Sure, let's bring the greatest economy of all time to a screeching motherfucking halt. Dude, a shout out. With that said, that reminded me, I listened to the most newest, uh, most newest. Shout the, out to them facts. Shout out to them facts. More facts you can find on uh, Quoth the Raven. So we've had Chris Irons on the podcast. He had Dave Collum, who I'm trying to find out. He's a professor at uh, Cornell. He's a professor at Cornell University. And it was a lot about, you know, they talk about a lot of finances. They talked a lot about uh, Bitcoin, but they talked a lot about what's going on right now with that very same word, the narrative and how politics has turned into this. It's, 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 a, it's a new game. It's evolved to this new level of narrative and who's, you know, what spin does the narrative have and what does that narrative do for each side? Yeah, what fake news you falling for? Because we all fall for it. Yeah. Because there's so much of it. So oh, yeah. sorry to cut you off. No, no, like, yeah. Whether it was the Covington kids. Mm-hmm. I fell for it. I was like, yeah, that little fucking racist little white boy with the MAGA hat right. all up in the face in the grill area of this indigenous gentleman. That was the initial narrative, right? It was. And I think if you had to give that one more than 72 hours because the retract, the debunk of it probably came a little bit later when they sued. That boy got paid, like, how much? Was it $800 million, I think? Something ridiculous. <laughs> what? Man, if I was him, I'd just go buy Twitter. Like, what's up, bitch? Yeah, right. 
<laughs> Bitch, I got the motherfucking duffel bags in the car. What's his name? Jack Dorsey. Jack uh, Dorsey looking like Castaway. Jack Dorsey. Oh, I, let me let me let me let me not say nothing crazy because you know I don't want to get kicked off the internet. You don't want to join the ranks of uh, Crowder, who I'm got not, suspended for seven days from YouTube. I'm that, not trying to be Chingo Alex Jones. Or maybe you do. <laughs> nah, <laughs> hey, look here, man. I'm just a nationally touring comedian. Uh, don't take any financial advice from a comedian, especially not from a comedic rapper. Uh, do not get any of your politics ideas or uh, some of these hot takes. Don't let none of my hot takes influence you. And get you kicked off the internet. So don't, look here, this is satirical. Look, listen here, listen here, NSA, Patriot Act. Shout listen out. here, look here, Alphabet Boys. I know, I know, I, I know my phone is right there. I know Alexa listening from over there. I know the satellites is. <laughs> you know, I, it's funny you say that because you're not you're not lying. Like everything is absolutely listening to us, and you could live in that world. But first of all, I want to go back to saying, yeah, sorry, bro. I'm, no, no, no. Now it's not even this anymore. It's I could see you because you said, uh, you know, Chingo Jones. I could see the Chingo Bling tank, you know, riding around, maybe like a Toyota <laughs> 4 Runner, you know, with like a turret, but also like a little 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 latch where you can come up and start yelling from. Uh, it's from a, a <laughs> it's a storm chaser van, exactly during hurricane season. Chingo Bling coming at you live from the eye of the storm. And then you just sling out the models to your supporters. Like, you get it. You get a dozen. You understand. Yeah, no, don't let Rob gas me up. <laughs> Be like, man, Chingo's really out there protesting like a motherfucker. Nah, what we, what we do here is, what's another word for protest? Is it just like, you know, share and lighting shit? Like, what's, I don't know what another, because I hate the word protest. Like, I hate the word protest. I don't like the word activist. Well, these days, these days, taking your ass to church <laughs> that's almost that, a protest yeah it really you're right no, you're right these days playing at the playground even though they didn't put yellow caution tape on all the monkey bars and the city spent money on a big ass sign talking about due to constitutions yeah. el virus mm -hmm. dude el virus so uh kids getting kicked off of airplanes because they ain't had they shot papers <sighs> you ain't got your shot papers boy you know, I didn't read the article, but that oh, it was a mask. Right? Yeah. It was it was a mask. Shot papers. They, they, they're not asking for shot papers. Not yet. yet not yet. But that's, that's you know your boy uh, Antonio Antonio Fauci. Uh, Antonio it, Banderas Fauci. Yeah, the headline said that Fauci says there will not be a federal uh, vaccine passport or whatever. And I was like, okay, well, I didn't read the article. I, I want to get back to it. I don't want to talk about it without reading it. But yeah. that's all we've been hearing for the last like two weeks, three weeks, maybe last month, and you're starting to. To hear of companies working with uh, like medical manufacturers or, or like, yeah, let's say vaccine manufacturers or distributors of sorts. Uh, and the one that I remember off the top of my head is MasterCard working with one of these companies to, you know, bring this uh, vaccine wallet to the consumer. And I'm just like, man, where does this go? Does enough, do enough people just say, OK, I guess. Yeah, that, that actually becomes a thing. Were you going to be showing your fucking passport the way you like pay with Apple Pay or whatever to just go anywhere? So, so you're saying there's a slippery slope. Uh, absolutely. Okay. So you're saying along the slippery slope, nobody's going to be like, hey, enough. There ha I, so I'm, where, you stop the, where you stop the slope and you readjust the slope. That's, my, that's what I hope for. And I think everybody listening also is hoping for the same thing because they're, they're acting and speaking and listening to things in a, in a manner that's going to lead to that for them in their environment, maybe their communities. But is enough people, you know, are enough people going to do that or too many of them still listening to fucking Shannon Sharp or Leah Remini on the talk, you know, talk about whatever. What's Leah Remini talking about? I don't know. She was talking, her and, uh, I, I was listening to somebody talk about her and Sharon Osbourne talk about something. There, it, it was celebrity gossip. It was, honestly, I don't remember what it was, but it was just somehow they, they find a way to like to throw, just like everybody, you know, everything's so politicized. You can't help but yeah. chat about it. And, and that's really... It's weird. It's weird how we're living in this era. It's almost like how much of that can you attribute to Trump? Yeah. Because it seems like, I think Andrew Schultz said, Trump made everybody start focusing on politics or thinking about politics. Yeah. Because I know, I mean, I was too busy working during the Trump era. You know what I'm saying? Bless up. I mean, I wasn't even paying attention. Yeah. I didn't have time to make it to the marches and the rallies because I was too busy working in the greatest economy in American history. And Facts. you can fact check that. That sounded like a WWE promo that right there. That sounded like an alpha agenda. 
that I'm pushing. That's a lot of toxic masculinity. Yeah, I think so. that was uh, actually, I, I believe that crossed the line into toxic machismo, Oof. which could be the title of a cumbia album <sighs> coming from Theo Juventino, who allegedly has been in the studio. But That's as we were saying, brother, mm-hmm. um, we, we started the episode by saying that one common theme is that that we've been talking about on this on this podcast. One common theme is, you know, your bullshit detector. Mm-hmm. You know, depending on like Fox News be lying, just like CNN be lying. You know, they frame things differently. They spin a little bit. They add some opinion. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So I know I might be pissing some people off because I know we got some fans on here. No, absolutely. Uh, of, uh, Fox News and CNN. And no, I'm just kidding. MSNBC. I don't know what the fuck y'all watch. <laughs> just RPT and nothing else. Some people have said that. Some people are like, this is where I go to just get my my ideas of what's been going on without being fully immersed in it. Because let's be real. If you're not really doing this because you're making a living from or any money from or you're, you know, uh, yeah, you're just stressing yourself. You're out, just stressing man. yourself out. If you're not <laughs> if you're not growing a project or a creative outlet of any sort, you're not doing uh, commentary on YouTube or whatever. You're probably not that immersed in it. That's why I have to smoke the amount of weed <laughs> that I smoke. Uh, speaking of shout out Shellshock CBD, bro, they just dropped some gummies called delta eight oh wait yeah, something like that delta yeah delta eight. eight is like the legal version of what you can like you can buy a delta eight flower at shops right now i think man but keep going did you take it did you try it bro last night and the night before whew, i'm telling you like best sleep i'd have had in a long time <laughs> it just boom push on your ass it looks like you woke up from a great great night's sleep yeah brother you look refreshed didn't you just know? head ass Bah, 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 bah. Yeah. Um, but what we've been saying on this podcast yeah. is that, you know, depending on where you're getting this info from, what your sources are, who you follow on Twitter, who's assigning you an opinion, you know, who had a fire take. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Who has considered, who has, who understands both sides of the issue? Um, you know, that's a big fucking variable. And the, the thing that comes to mind when you say, like, everybody has their spin on it, right? Yeah. There was a, a clip. Of, and Tucker's interesting. I, I like Tucker. He's funny at times. Uh-huh. Um, and, you, yeah, there was also that clip of Hannity, like, a week or two ago, when he's, like, he's ripping on a jewel, and they cut back to him. Did you see that? Yeah. He's like, oh. He's was like, uh-oh. And, like, goes back into his whatever the fuck story he's talking about next. But Tucker had that that one intro to when Biden did the conference, like, the actual, like, first presser or whatever to the yeah. public on national TV. And he starts, everything's, like, there's something about writing. Like, if you can write something really, really well, and this this goes into entertainment. It uh-huh. bleeds over to entertainment. If you can write a sketch, uh, a monologue, a bit really, yeah. really well, and then whether it's that person that wrote it or someone else delivers it, you have such an ability to hypnotize whoever that's listening to or watching you with those words, right? Yeah. So whoever wrote it, you know, was like, uh, and Biden was uh, stammering around uh, as if confused to what today was, and it was his first speech, you know, to the to the public. Yeah. Uh, he he looks over to his you know assistant and he says it's today and nudges him into the X on the marker, you know, and it's just uh. like. Did he really, like, was he that, he, maybe he was that confused? Did he really nudge him into the X marks the spot to start talking to the public? But, you know, if people were only listening to that and nothing else, they'd probably be hook, line, and sinker. Like, man, this poor, you know, demented old man is, is not, is needing to be nudged into his yeah, uh, podium. Yeah, yeah. yeah, context. You know, like, like you know, with, uh, with Joe Breezy, for example. Sometimes he'd be trying to do these cheesy-ass dad jokes, but it, com- it comes across as... Ya se le está yendo la huila. A hundred percent. Se le van las cabras este güey. And we've been thinking that since before, you know, before yeah. any of this happened. Yeah, and it's kind of sad to comment on it because it's a, it, it, you get into the medical field. You know what I mean? You're getting into like diagnosing people and just. Well, one of the reporters asked yesterday. It's a health thing, yeah. Uh, to, to, to Chucky Pisaki, when are we going to get, you know, when, when is the, the former vice president's medical records going to be released? And she was like. Ooh. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to circle back basically without, she's been really good about not saying circle back anymore. Okay. She's just saying, I'm going to get back to, I'm going to holla at you. Pretty much. She might as well just say, I'm going to holla back. Uh, I'm going to, I fuck with you. What's another word I could, I'm going to 
come back to it. All right, I'm going to let you make it, uh, Pimpin. Yeah, I'm all right. Gonna, I'm going to make it back to the South. Next one. Oh, no, 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 but I'm not done yet. But can you do better than... <laughs> Man, I'm about to hit this highway, baby. The, the, the reporter literally said, can you <laughs> do Can you do better than uh, you're going to get yeah. back to me? She's oh. like, well, I have to verify, and then I'll come back. That was it. Man, she don't got none of the answers. Dude, not, not a one. But that's kind of her job. They, were like, they were like, hire a bitch that ain't going to have all the answers. Like, Jen, she, they're like, oh, my God, I did so bad when we were testing for this job. She probably purposely did bad to not get the job. <laughs> that's so funny. That's and not... they're like, no, bitch, that's why you got the job, because you ain't going to have none of the answers. That is a genius take on it, actually. Yeah, it's like, it's like if, you're, if you're trying to qualify 10 different candidates, get the one that's, uh, that's always like, yeah, I'm going to have to, uh, yeah, let me, uh, I fuck what you. you got the same number, Pippin? What, what? <laughs> you got the same number? Okay, Key, I'm going to hit you back. I'm going to hit you back. Because then the burden of proof is, I mean, on who? Like, people can ask questions and they're like, I'm supposed, she's, I'm supposed to know the answer. I don't know it, so figure it out, pretty much. Go ask another colleague. I don't know. But maybe that's what they want. Well, that, you yeah. know, they don't want a whole bunch of transparency. But this is supposed <laughs> to be the most transparent I mean, I know that's what history. we said. But you didn't really think we meant it, I mean, it, right? I know we made it seem like, oh, we about to give y'all so much transparency because Trump <laughs> and McEnany, oh, no. Mm -mm. She, she, with her little book, with her little notes. How dare and she? And then they started clown, clowning Biden because he had his little picture book with his little notes. Right, his little pop-up book. And people clowning him, but it's like, okay, well, when Kaylee had detailed notes, it was, you know, they was prepared. Yeah, but they had, the, they had that side-by-side -side of her. I don't even know if it was real, but... I'm trying to stay out the gulags, man. Nah, it's too late. We're already there. We got a front row front row seat. Uh, Shit. Her binder was like organized like the nerds in, 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 you know, in class was, and then Chucky's was like literally papers crammed in there and crinkled up, nothing's in order, everything's out of sync, and you can just see it sticking out with like pages like that. That's why she got hired. Her book bag looked like my book bag in school. <laughs> my shit was so fucking raggedy, I had papers all fucked up. You're being coy. Come on. You know you're more organized than that. Uh, nah, not really. <laughs> not really. Like, like right now, I'm taking notes from Mighty Soil. Yeah, that's true. Everybody, yeah, I'm, everybody I'm, can take notes from Mighty Soil. I'm peeping her, her blueprint. So That's a good blueprint. On that social media and all that type of shit. But uh, yeah, even with the, you know, the media, bro. The media will set you up for failure. The media will have you believe in people. You know, like Greta Thunberg and shit. You see that meme? It's like her. It was like, stop sending me this. It's not me. It stop sending me this shit. It's not me. And it's like another kid that looks like her smoking a cigarette. Oh, that's fucking funny. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's... even with the with the uh, with the riots, right? You know, there allegedly it's gonna be a little Mexican dude that looks kind of like me. Might pass for Filipino, and you might see him at a Target with a washing machine because my shit been tripping. <laughs> You might allegedly see uh, somebody that looks like Chingo Bling at a Target getting a new Wi-Fi router or an extender. <laughs> we still haven't called AT and T. I know we need to, uh, <laughs> Mighty Soil. We're so behind on so much stuff. Well, you know what the good thing, of the, the reason for that is that you've been grinding in this praise uh, VP Biden economy that's starting to open up again. Uh, you've been grinding. Man. Yeah, we're slowly getting back to work. Too bad it still varies state to state. Needless to say, my Brea California show got pushed back. So I have to uh, text Darren Carter. He's one of the uh, comedians, OG, veterano, who was supposed to be on the show. So now I'm having to court re coordinate mm. with him. Like, hey, bro, I think it's in September. So I, I saw somebody post something that outside uh, like gatherings are, are like going to be okay next week, starting next week. Man, I, who, California? Yeah. I don't know, but we ain't stopped barbecuing a not nan bit not a day if anybody uh wants to contribute to the um traeger fund that i have i'm starting as don and i are moving into our, our new place this weekend Woo! Uh, yeah Tra traeger fund yeah man traeger hey, i need fund. me a traeger fund after you fund after we fund rob's traeger fund. yeah no no actually let's fund chingos first because there'll be a studio traeger that we can put back here and actually grill hey man we can, ha we can have two gofundme kickstarters bro yeah uh but that gofundme kickstarter is actually patreon.com forward slash yeah <laughs> yeah shout out to all the new patrons that have signed up absolutely a lot of people went ahead and saved money what they did was, man, they saved percentages. 16%. 16 percentages because they paid for the 16 year. 16 percentages. Because they paid for the whole year up front. Because they trust the value and entertainment 
that we're bringing people week mm. after week. I asked Dean Del Rey. I said, hey, big homie. Yeah. Veterano in the podcast world. Give me some advice on podcasting. All right. Of course, he's like, man, you no matter what, you got to be there for the people week after week after week. And we are here thanks to the patrons. That's right. Let's get into the first article of the day, Chingo. Mm-hmm. Headline reads, Biden administration considers restarting border wall construction to plug gaps amid Biden's border crisis. Here's a report. Uh, th- for some context, this is the dailywire.com. Mm-hmm. They lean right. For sure. All right. <laughs> I like how you said that. You got to, hey, man, look, we're not trying to bamboozle people and, and give people an agenda and cram something down your throat. We're just trying to give y'all the hottest takes. Yeah, it is the hottest takes because you're going to hear uh, other sides of this after you listen to this podcast because this literally, I just caught this today as I was coming over here. It wasn't even on the list and it was the last thing I saw. That it, started, it was seven minutes ago when I saw it. Let's scroll up a little bit. Let me see his face. Okay. <laughs> hey, man, look, let me give him some props, man. Joseph Raheem Breezy. Yeah. My presidente. Yeah. I think he's a hell of an actor. He is a hell of an actor. You, think you see so? that face yeah. from that picture? Uh huh. That's like, I'm concerned and I fucking care. Finally, an adult is in the White House. We can all sleep better at night. Here's a, here's a question for you. And let me pose this to all the listeners, too. Do you really think this man is in control? Well, let me say this. Everybody has a team. Everybody has a staff. And you know what I want in a leader? I want my leader to be persuasive. I want my leader to know how to make faces like that. And, and, and if it's time, for example, let's say there's a new virus or a new variant, and you're scared the economy is going to hit the fucking floor if you make everybody panic. But then you make that face, and you let everybody know, rest assured, me and my team, we got this. I want my leader to be persuasive and give you some hope and some confidence or some a little bit of security, even though shit might be hitting the fan. Kind of like what Trump did. <laughs> kind of like what Trump did, right? But they call that he downplayed it. He downplayed it. Ese. That's why we had so many deaths, because you're a fucking president, Donald Trumpas, <laughs> a.k.a. Pelo de Elotes. <laughs> Pinche Trumpers. But anyway, so basically Biden is saying build the wall. He is. Wait, wait, wait. I've posed a question that I need an answer to. Do you think this man is in charge? Okay. Um, if you, ha- if, if you well, had to answer, just... Well, uh, well with, of course. Hey, I mean, Jen no, Sackie. No president. Hey, Jen Sackie. This is You're my, tiptoeing this around. This is my circle back. You have three branches, right? Uh-huh. The exec- what is it? Executive, legislative. What's the other one? Executive, judicial. Judicial and the legislative. <laughs> so the Supreme Court is one of the branches? Uh-huh. Wow. Well... So, Okay, yeah. Whatever it is, it's not just the president, right? You have the House and the Senate and the Congress and this and that. Right. You got a whole bunch of other shit. So, arguably, Nancy Pelosi has a lot of power. Uh, Arguably, you know, this might be Obama 3.0. I don't know if this is the Clintons. I don't know who's... I don't know what kind of... You know, man, you're trying to make me talk about the deep state. <laughs> that, you, I don't want to be in the gulag. They, they ain't going to let us have kettlebells in the gulag. You bro. actually got to the to, to what I was I was curious about. And, and just see what you would say. Because, you know, there's the rumblings of, is this man really in charge, right? Or is it... Because oh. we're, we're hearing more and more of uh, Kamala possibly being in charge. But even then, like, she's such a rookie when it yeah. comes to having that much power yeah. that you have to then go into you know what, what's the phrase like peek behind the is there a third is it a third rail or fourth wall whatever the fucking thing is like in this movie is it really that there's a previous player that's actually pulling the strings you know well i think uh, arguably you would have like consiglieres type shit right like consultants like say if it, if it was a international type of thing or something dealing with asia or something dealing with like the pentagon like military there might be a general you like to rely upon you know what i'm saying there might be two economists that you want to pick their brain have them debate it out to see to make a decision so with all that being said no (laughs) no he ain't calling all the fucking shots so biden's department of homeland security uh Alejandro Mayorkas, Mayorkas said that during uh, during a conversation with ICE employees last week that the administration was considering finishing gaps in the wall. Basically, they're trying to build the wall. So how does the Raza feel about Joseph Rahim Breezy building the wall? How do they feel about this rhetoric? Because I always thought that was racist. 
I thought if you wanted border security, you are a bigot. Mm. Because, you know, coconuts and sellouts like to say stuff like, bro, it's national security, especially in a pandemic. We have to not allow a bunch of drugs and we can't overwhelm, overwhelm our border patrol and you don't want terrorists coming through there. But then you got people that are more, you know, more like they might have been out there with Antifa. They might have been out there con la raza con BLM. Right. You know, more Democrat. They're going to say, no, that's racist. So the report comes, um, uh, I lost it. The report comes after Biden's border crisis overwhelmed, has overwhelmed the U.S.-Mexico border, promoting backlash against Biden from, from Republicans, Democrats, and even the president of Mexico. And you guys talk to a lot of people down there, right? You know, you know what's going on because you were there and mm-hmm. then firsthand experienced it and also listen to the people that are down there. It is a real thing. Yeah. Something's got to be done. And the border. If you if you got family in the Rio Grande Valley, right. even though uh, four out of the six counties are blue down there. Well, actually, they're purple because they were borderline about to flip red. Mm. Two out of the six were, I think, just flipped red. Thanks to all the work that people are doing down there. I mean, just like so many of these youngsters are Border Patrol. Mm. These are folks that are in your family. These are people you get together with, carne asada. You live down there. You might have a homie that works at one of the um, facilities. What do they call them now? Pods. Is that what they're called? Pods? Whatever. The, you know, Biden's migrant, unaccompanied migrant uh, uh, summer camp. Safe havens. Yeah, safe haven summer camp shelter house. Yeah. Um, Ronald McDonald house. <laughs> On Tommy Happy Meal. Yeah. So you, ha- so you have, so yeah, like you were saying, you have opinions a lot of people are conservative in Mexico. A lot of people felt a certain way about the caravans coming through and then being stuck in their country. Have you seen those videos of the caravans coming this way now? <sighs> no. And uh, have they been fact checked? Like, are they of like current? Oh yeah. How, how did they? How did, who 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 documented it? Uh, I mean, it, it was a Central American news outlet talking about how you know, due to um, or because of now President Biden's message to okay. you know yeah. these South American countries or Central American countries, we're seeing an influx of like caravans uh, getting together. They're even specifically like getting together now and planning to head out Tuesday. This was last week, so it's just like, and then you you see the videos of people just fucking. It's like they're running a marathon. It's not funny, but it's like they're running a marathon. They're literally getting together and they're running. Like, you're going to be running for a long time. Like, let's pace ourselves. Let's walk. Bro, I get tired after a three mile walk. Like, over there, Memorial. Ain't mm-hmm. that like three miles? It's more than that, but three miles is a good, good or chunk. Or let's of just it. say it's, <clears throat> what's Memorial? Four? Let's go four. Okay. I get tired as a bitch. Do you, you run s- it or do you walk it? Well, we want it. We want to run it this week, but. We mainly walk it. We got the stroller. Nothing wrong with that. Got Mickey. Got oh, the yeah. other baby. My wife's pregnant. We can't all jog you know, at, at the same <laughs> That's what it is. Because if it wasn't, you know, you'd be, be running. You saying bolting that shit. But she's, she, she actually trained how, how to run. I was actually on the high school track team. You were? Momentarily. I, I, I was on the sprinting team. You know, as you could tell. No, I was horrible. I sucked, but we'll talk about that on Chingo Chats. Yeah, you're right. Um, that reminds me, uh, when I had Eddie Bravo on an old podcast, he talked about being in track as well. I sucked. We'll, we'll talk about it. He said the same thing. Yeah. So, so as I was saying, we're talking <clears throat> about the caravans. We're talking about how a lot of people are conservative <laughs> in Mexico. <clears throat> they feel a certain way. They have an opinion about the little deal the Mexican government has had with the cartels over the years and the caravans coming through Yeah. and how the clip went viral of the Honduran woman complaining saying we're tired of beans and tortillas they're giving us you know we're tired of that like and the mexicans got offended so they're like hey man y'all draining our resources yeah then you have the mayor of tijuana during the trump era he was rocking a hat that said like make tijuana great again was it he was conservative he 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 wasn't on this left type of stuff i have a question here that's kind of i mean again i'll pose it to everybody listening maybe you can let us know on instagram or patreon when when we get when we when people get here right when the immigrants come they make it across let's say they make it through the river through you know illegally or they come through overstay a visa or whatever the case may be right what and it's just speculation again as a as a son of a immigrant mother um Mm -hmm. what is the goal when you get here right to the united states it's to live a life of more prosperity right of more opportunity than where you came from and yet we have the politicians on let's just say the left trying to pander to this audience to vote for them in the future in hopes of what like 
are they expecting things? You come here to work and and for a better opportunity, and yet this side is saying that they're going to give you all these things for free. I would like to think that a lot of people coming here have a work ethic that is uh, unmatched by a lot of people who aren't willing to do certain jobs, and they want to just hustle, you know, work their teeth off to get whatever the fuck they want and not expect any handouts. But the whole message is, we're going to give you this, we're going to give you that, so come here. You know what I mean? Well, when I hear my parents or like my dad talk about when they came and overstayed that visa. Yeah. El permiso. In a different time, in a different era. Totally, totally different era. Um, it, they, they mainly would say like, Mexico's corrupt. They're not going to let you get ahead. The economy ain't all that. The, the politicians are crooked. They've sold us out. Mexico has been robbed of its resources for ages. That's why, like, my great great grandfather was like a miner in uh, Real de Catorce. Uh, basically, where all the minerals, silver and gold, and all that. Word. That, that town was silver. It ended up on a ship and it go back to Spain because it was under Spanish rule for like three hundred years. So basically, my dad would talk about they don't pay you the same. You know, you want the dollar, the dollar strong. You know, how many pesos is it to the dollar? You know, your money goes longer. You can provide more. It's a different lifestyle. Yeah. You know, it wasn't home. So they definitely had culture shock. They had to readjust. But um, I don't, I don't, I never heard my dad say, because the Democrat son, they <laughs> promised us things and they're going to take care of you and they're going to give you all these services and, and they're, you know, it's this party. And as long as we give them our vote in the future, he just kind of somehow was just, I don't know where he got this notion from. But he kind of passed it down to us. <laughs> yeah. But he literally had this notion where if there's a Republican president in the in the office, the economy's gonna go to shit. And you know, you don't wanna make no big investments and you don't wanna tie up no money, you don't wanna make no moves because while the Republicans are in, it's gonna be all fucked up. I don't know where he got that from. Yeah, it's weird because you're seeing more of the simplified versions of explaining like the left versus right, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, the left wants, they believe that more government, the more power government has, the better it is for the people versus the right where it's, and this is oversimplifying it, but in a sense is what it is. They believe more in independent uh, governing and leave it to the states. Less, and, less taxes. Yeah, you know, and to a degree, obviously, yeah. depending on who you are, but... If you just took those two ideas and presented it to an immigrant or anybody in the United States, let's just say anybody here in Texas or Houston, you would think, you would think that they're like, yeah, you know, less government, yeah, uh, more independence for sure. Leave it to the states, leave the federal government out of it. Okay, what, what's what, what's wrong with that? Exactly. Yet here we are, butting heads constantly every day over these very issues. Well, I think because nobody nobody ever broke it down that simply, Rob. Maybe you should have said that in Spanish, yeah. and, and then that clip would have went viral. But they want to hear yeah. from you, Chingo. Wait, man, can you pass that water I'm right there? Here, boy. Oh, thank you. You see me uh, looking at it like a motherfucker. <laughs> uh, fuck was I saying? That's called an attentive, um, hyper aware sense of your surroundings. This motherfucker's thirsty. <laughs> so, what the fuck was I saying? We were talking say about nobody said it that way. I oh, should have yeah, said it in yeah. Spanish. So, so basic, basically, Left, right, big government, small yeah. government. Basically, where the fuck did my dad get this notion from? And how much influence does uh, Univision and mm -hmm. Telemundo and Jorge Ramos and all these people who arguably are leftist propagandists? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They always going to talk good about Obama and they always going to talk good about the Democrats. And, you know, we might get that amnesty, y'all. And, they, you know, y'all know they talking about DACA. But they don't ever say... Trump tried giving y'all DACA a couple times, but he, he was trying to barter saying, look, man, fund me the wall. Let me get this wall built. Yeah. I can keep this promise and y'all can get DACA. And then Kamala was like, nope. She voted against it. There's a lot of pictures going around of her right now. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm just noticing it where it's her laughing, you know, like she does that fucking that laugh, but it's just the still of like. One eye looks like it's popping out, and the veins are going around her forehead, and it looks like it was kind of Photoshop. But it's just like it, it's that it's that meme of that kid who's trying to hold a fart in. Oh man! <laughs> All the veins are pulsing out of his face. That's what her face looks like. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Uh, I don't know. I just I had to ask that because I, I was just curious on on what you might you know your take on it, and that's interesting what you said, and maybe what listeners have to say because again, this is RPT, the Common Sense Show. And a lot of things that come out on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's people yelling on Twitter or it's people yelling on YouTube or where the fuck ever, 
it's uh, a lot of nonsensical shit. Yeah, like this Georgia voting thing. Right. Where one side of the argument is by these Republicans trying to sign this law in the state of Georgia that is making it harder for people of color, <sighs> particularly the African-American community, to vote. These racist Republicans signed it in a room with a picture of an old plantation in the back. And the headlines were, this white man Republican signing this law requiring you show ID to vote, surrounded by six white men. That was actually a headline. That was the headline. Yeah. Six white men looked on. As if it was the KKK saying, you better... Take us back to Jim Crow 2.0. All it is is, hey, man, this shit ain't been that transparent. These elections have been iffy. Y'all been doing too much mail-in voting, too much don't got to show ID type of shit. We want to show ID. <gasps> Coca-Cola can't stand it. Delta Airlines can't stand it. Chick-fil-A didn't say shit. Chick-fil-A is also based out of Atlanta, and they're like, shit. Coke, <laughs> Coke. You 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 set yourself up for failure. Yeah, you, <laughs> you do your thing. Let me sling my chicken. Be off on Sundays, and you know, do yeah. what I do. You know, Chick Fil A ain't playing that shit. I, I read quite a bit about it, and I would suggest you know reading this, starting with this one, just so you can get two sides of it. Uh, it's an opinion piece on the New York Times, and I'll let here li listeners can see it real quick. Uh, if it's not Jim Crow, what is it? Okay. Read through it. Um, okay, this is from the New York Times. Yeah, no, I don't mean you read it right now. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, if people yeah, want to read it. but it's from the New York it Times. It is from the New York Times, so people know that, you know, it's, it's coming from... It's an opinion columnist. Far from a Fox Blaze, you know, Daily Wire type stuff. And to sum it up, he, he's, he basically said, it's not Jim Crow, but it's Jim Crow-esque. Because you're asking people to show ID to vote? Pretty much. And he, you know, and it's like, there's a lot of half-truths in it where people always conflate things that happened in during that time let you know post uh, reconstruction era and now and you can you can try to like bring things together that kind of like you know are a little similar but again you use that hypnotic ability to write something really well or, or you know yeah. post a story yeah and, and it and, confuses people yeah man um okay if it's racist to have to show id and if this new law is jim crow-esque because a certain percentage of black folk, to, uh, I guess, allegedly, I never knew this, don't have an ID. Isn't it also racist that they won't be able to get a vaccine? How are you going to get a vaccine without an ID? That's a good point. So if I go to Chase Bank, try to do a transaction, and they ask me for ID, do I take a picture and, and go live and be like, man, these racist motherfuckers. <laughs> Look at these racist motherfuckers want to ask me for ID. So let's take it a step further. Um, let me get, recount my memory of what... So it's SB 201, 202, whatever it is. Um, the, the ID... Because you you, when you vote in person, you got to show them your fucking ID, right? Uh, well. So this is for the mail-in ballots, right? So the mail-in voting. Before, you could just... They would do signature uh, author, uh, authentication or whatever the fuck you call it. And they're like, eh, that shit ain't working no more because there's too many discrepancies in the signature verifications. So now what you need to do is have a copy of your ID. But it doesn't stop there. If you don't have a license, rather, if you don't have a license, you can get an ID, which is free. And it doesn't stop there. You can send in the last four digits of your social or a utility bill or a government pay stub. The list goes on of things you could do to prove who you are. But none of that is mentioned. It's just you have to show ID to vote. That's, not, that's just not true there's a lot more to it there's other ways there's also more days that you can vote so they're like oh there, there's less days for people to vote no that's not true early voting's actually been extended even to two sundays of the month mm. so on and so forth and it's that's what's so aggravating because you can go find these bills everybody you can just take this clip and, and if nobody's heard this maybe this is breaking news you can go find the bills and then read them and not hear it from shannon sharp or hear it from Jamila, whoever the fuck her name was, who was just like, this uh, is... Uh, yeah, the MLB. Or the MLB. Uh, Coca-Cola. It's just retarded, man. It's straight up dumb. Yeah, man. Um, I don't know. To me, it... I Basically, this is what it comes down to. The Republicans want to be able to win. 
the Democrats <laughs> want to be able to win. So they're both each side is like, hurry up, write a fucking bill. Hey, y'all better change that rule. Because right before the 2020 election, uh, it was, man, what's the guy's name? I think his name is um Mark Cortez or some shit like that. Hmm. But he was, uh, he used to be one of Hillary's lawyer okay. people. And he's one of the guys that went around to all these different states mm -hmm. changing the rules, changing all the different rules to where we got the results we got, where people would allege there was some ballot harvesting, there was some discrepancies with the signatures, there was some discrepancies with the mail-in stuff. Supposedly, allegedly, some people went to vote, but they had voted already, didn't know, because mm. the ballot somehow got... <laughs> El que no tranza no avanza. Ooh. So basically, the Republicans really just want to win. Yeah. And they're like, man, the Democrats are good at winning. Because they good at changing loopholes and shit. So here come the Republicans surrounded by six white men under a picture that resembles a plantation. So the crazy thing about it is that now sports are getting involved. Corporations are getting involved. Like if you didn't think we lived in a corporateocracy before, if you already viewed the world through that lens, you know, to where the corporations have so much influence. But then again you know, culture and leftist agenda, how you ain't going to see SNL make fun of Biden. Instead, they're going to have the little Asian dude trying to push this white supremacy is Asian hate. Did you happen to, by chance, see this weekend's SNL? I heard about it. It was uh, somebody lap dancing Jesus. Oh, my God. You didn't, did you see it? I know that's... See, look, there's this little game these motherfuckers play. You know, in, in, in reference... Keep, no, no, keep going, keep yeah. going. No, it's in reference to the Lil Nas X shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I, think, <clears throat> I think I did see... I might have been scrolling on Instagram or I'll maybe to, on... I'll try to find it real quick. Maybe on Twitter I saw like a, a little thumbnail. But it was a, one of the comedians dressed up like Lil Nas X and the little devil chaps. And a dude... Who, look, was it Jim Carrey? Is Jesus? Who was that? Was it Jim Carrey? I don't know who it was. But all this stuff is designed to trigger <clears throat> religious folk oh yeah conservatives and people who view the world through the lens of look man it's a it's a leftist agenda and they really push pushing satanism and you know um in a way you could argue it's like well i mean if you view the world through that conspiracy lens, and I guess, uh, I'm sure in, in, your, in some people's mind, Lauren Michaels, the dude that put together a SNL, the head dude and the head writers, they're all Satanists and they do rituals on the weekend. And it's like, okay, well, maybe they're just fucking making fun of pop culture and somebody suggested it and it made it past the editing process and somehow it made the cut and they were trying to be funny and I don't watch SNL. Not at all. I found it here. I'm just trying to load it up. The title is SNL. Lil Nas X gives God an Easter lap dance. Oh, on Easter. <clears throat> oh, you done really triggered me. Oh, man. On Easter? How dare On that. Good Sunday? Isn't it Good Friday? Is well, it considered Good Sunday? Well, I know at, at my show, uh, somebody yelled something out. I was like, hey, wait. On Good Saturday, wait? <laughs> really? And you Broncos, really, bro? On Good Saturday? <sighs> Had to be there. <laughs> Crowd loved it. They went wild. Maybe down los chones. That was funnier than, funnier than actually getting the joke. Anytime somebody's like, had to be there. Yeah. You kind of just trail off. Yeah. This fucking video doesn't even have it. This is like a Britney Spears. Well, we ain't got to watch it. It ain't fucking we, worth we, it. We heard enough, basically. I, I'm sure whatever joke they were trying to make. I really don't know what the fuck. <sighs> so Rogan had, uh, what's his name? Brett Weinstein, the, the real smart uh, biologist guy that has a brother that's really smart on yeah, yesterday. Eric and Bruce. yeah, yeah, I think it was Eric. And um, he said, like, accidentally, he was like, they were talking about this and something else. And he's like, yeah, you know, and referencing it to old SNL days, like back when SNL was funny. And then right away, he's like, I shouldn't have said that. He's like, they're still kind of funny sometimes, he's trying to like backpedal a little bit. But oh. it's true, like, oh. SNL's not funny. Well, like it used to be well, in the 90s. Here's the thing a lot of variables. Number one, I don't even watch it. I haven't seen enough of it to even really be able to really judge it. Like, you'd have to sit me down, press play, 
and be like, okay, bro, this is your fucking assignment. Yeah, exactly. You know what? And that kind of proves the point I was about to say is that you would, that would have, that's what it would take for you to watch it. Whereas before, <laughs> if you had Chris Max. Kattan, Chris Farley, uh, Adam Eddie, Sandler, Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy, Jim Brewer, the whole squad, you're like, I cannot wait to see what's going on this weekend. I used to have the best of SNL uh, Chris Farley edition. Oh. I love that, dude. Yeah, it's so funny. Yeah. Now it's like, oh, like, is this my assignment? I guess I'm going to yeah. watch it. Hmm. Well, maybe they shifted. Like, obviously, back in the day, they had the reputation of hiring some of the best improvisers out of Second City in Chicago. Like, a lot of dudes came out of the improv world, like Will Ferrell. I think, uh, I think uh, Farley, I mm. believe. Um, or was it UBC? But, but, yeah, or, one of them. Nah, I think a lot of them. UCB, came, rather. Yeah, I think a lot of them came out of Second City. Mm -hmm. But supposedly, word on the streets is Lauren Michaels over at NBC or whatever when he took SNL over there. That's mainly the stars that they were getting. Mm -hmm. And it was the 80s. Hollywood was different. So they were getting these big franchise movie deals out of it, knocking it out the park. SNL was making movies that were knocking it out the park. Yeah. Um, and then it sh supposedly it shifted to hiring Ivy League right uh, white men. Which Jim Brewer, who was on Rogan recently, had a really, really good story from his SNL days. Oh. And how... Oh, yeah. How it was just traumatic. Yeah, right? dude. It was a really good episode. I love Jim Brewer because he's just... He's great. And he's uh, he does some really great Metallica bits and whatever. Um, but he told a really good story about how it came to that you know that time where his wife was just like you are so miserable leave that mm, fucking job you know yeah, yeah. and he kind of he didn't badmouth lauren uh, at all but did say like the environment of what was going on there with the writers in the writer's room and stealing bits and stealing sketches and all that it's just like it that's when it started to really take a turn <sighs> and that was like late 90s i think maybe yeah. i don't know it, it, yeah and he was younger because yeah. i know i look back at some situations in my life when you try to blame it on the game or blame it on this or blame it on this environment, mm -hmm. blame it on this situation, blame it on this scenario. And it's like, you were also 25, right. 26, 23, like 28, depending on what, what chapter of my life. And it's like, okay, you got to, um, you got to account for a certain percentage <laughs> <laughs> for because sure. we know how you perceived it, but fuck, how did other people perceive the situation? Right. Right. But, um, so, Long story short, look here, man. There's two sides. You got. I haven't seen the Shannon Sharp. Is this a good time to to play that? The sure, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, but go ahead. I mean, no, no, no. I'm well, just gonna set up the Shannon Sharp. Oh, I'll, I'll toss it on over to you. Oh, really? But but basically, there's two sides. One side is saying this is super fucking racist. This is setting us back to the 1960s civil rights era. It's Jim Crow esque. Um, you know, it's highly racist that these white men would put this law into Georgia. Mind you, a state that used to have the Confederate flag flying over their capital uh, for many years. I don't know if they took it down. But you can't ask people for ID. That's racist. And then you got the Republicans that are like, no, we just want more transparency. But really, we just want to win. <laughs> We're not going to let y'all just beat us. Nah. They trying to, they trying to uh, finesse each other with the rules. Let's see here. Shannon Sharp said. El Shannon Sharp. El Shannon Sharp. Is it going to play, Chingo? Oh, man, bro. Don't tell me our fucking Wi Fi, dog. LB, I like. We're going to have to fucking call ATT. If you're playing the drinking game, everybody. Every uh, time Chingo says, man, we got to call ATT. I am sorry for your liver at this point. It's just <laughs> buffering. <laughs> I'm gonna refresh it just for the shit so of it. So was he making it sentimental? Like, man, I remember. Oh, bro, you gotta fucking. Did he cry? Him. No, you okay. know that would have been funny. That would have been hilarious if he did. Who was the guy that cried? Shit. Hey, if the check is right, if the Democrats cut me the right size check, I will be a vendido and I will cry about this. Shango, how dare you? It's good way, not that way. It's good. Yahweh. <laughs> this shit. This shit is Jim Crow esque, bro. You know, at the plight of the indigenous peoples. Rob, you need to check your privilege, bro, because, like, if anybody should know, think about your family tree, bro. <laughs> Don't be a fucking KKK lover. God damn it, that's so funny. <laughs> if we get kicked off Patreon, we know why. All right, here we go. It's loading up, everybody. Patrons, uh, 
Thank you for the Wi-Fi. Y'all about, <laughs> y'all about to get us. Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. Hardwire. No, because we got to get the hardwire so that we can then Twitch in the future as well. Yes. We can't have no Wi-Fi. Boo-boo I want, I want to do there. gaming. I want to do so much shit. I want to make so much content. Uh, shout out to Sam Tripoli. I'm supposed to be on recording something with him in a couple weeks. Hey. Um, just want to throw that out there. I need to get a little bell every time my name drop. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, if, if people only heard you the other day when we're uh, after we recorded and you were having lunch, you're like, oh, I'm just on the phone over here with my pals. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my friend Pitbull just uh, texted me. Chris Stefano, you know, Andrew oh, Schultz. Oh, Chris Stefano just wished me happy Easter. What's up, buddy? I can just see him saying that. What's up, babe? Yeah. It's what it is. Uh, this yeah, is okay, not well, going to fucking play. It off play. Your phone. play it off your phone. Man, bro. you right, man. But I got, you know. Uh, it's Instagram. It is Oh, because you wanted them to watch it. You know. Bean. Shout out to the sure. patrons. Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. <clears throat> I love that every time we come to a city, we have Colleen this weekend and Lubbock this weekend. There's always members of the Thea. Are there? Yes. There's always members of the Thea. Word? I heard Rob is going to put out a beard oil because he's going to... Freedom get, beard oil. He's going to use his natural beard yeah. genetics to trick people. <laughs> like a charlatan, like a snake oil. Like MLB. I like that taking a stand and skip. At some point in time, you're going to have to put action to your words. You say you're about inclusion. You say you're about uh, doing the right thing. At some point in time, you have to put those actions into words. I mean, put those words into action. Yep. And that's what they're doing, Skip. Now, you're going to be relegated to where you can take this game to. Because there's a lot of other states that's doing the exact same thing as Georgia, <laughs> Texas, Florida. So those, you, okay. Florida, you're off the list. Texas, you're off the list. There are a lot of states that are doing the exact same thing off that Georgia list? is that Georgia did. Mm-hmm. That's good. What I don't understand, and this is what's confusing with me. Mitch McConnell, Lindsey Graham, was on the under ticket for President Trump. President Trump lost the election because of fraud, but they won the election. They won their Senate races. It was fair and square. I'm confused, Skip. How does that work? Well, the top guy lost, but my election was fair and square, so let's do something about it. Now, in 2016, we know for a fact Russia tried to interfere. Uh Mitch McConnell would do nothing. He wouldn't even bring it to the floor. Now, you want to put these right because what they see, Skip, there's a a changing of the guard. Oh, I didn't see CNN. More people are becoming of age (laughs) to vote, and they're minorities. Uh-oh. And they're voting. So instead of changing your messaging Uh-oh. and try to reach out to a new base, that what do year? you do? We're going to try to restrict so you can't. It shouldn't be harder to vote than to get a gun. Now, mm-hmm. what's wrong with that picture, Skip? You notice that they're making it harder to vote than to get I didn't see no all the means. <laughs> no, we don't want to do nothing with the gun. No, I want my Second Amendment. What is more democratic than the right to vote? Now, America, people are looking at us That's because you go around the world said. and say, oh, we want fair Weird elections. comparison. And when, when, when don't dictators need an FBI and they try to check. put a stranglehold on the, to the process of a democracy, mm-hmm. you all up in arms. You go in there and you do this and you do that. But right here in America, the same thing is happening. They're trying to take us back. As soon as we get one step, <laughs> just a little bit of say so, it bothered them, Skip, that Georgia went red. We got two, we got two, got two senators. Got the first black senator in Georgia history. He said red. Mm-hmm. Raphael uh, Raphael Warnock. Mm-hmm. We got a uh, Jewish uh, uh, congressman, uh, uh, Ossoff. That bothered him, Skip. That's why, so they because he's Jewish, they, Skip. Man, Florida's still slowly creeping. North Carolina's slowly creeping. Georgia went over the edge. Texas, slowly creeping. Man, we got to get. We got to do something about this here. Man, bro. We, too many people, hey, man, they starting to vote. <laughs> so instead of changing your messaging and trying to appeal to a larger base of people, now what we're going to do, we like our base. Well, your base ain't strong enough, bro. Because what's happening is that the people see what you're trying to do. (laughs) President Biden said, you know what? We're going to let you keep Obamacare. What we're going to try to do, we're going to try the middle class. We're going to let you bring home more money. We're going to put a bigger tax on the wealthy. Skip, we're in that tax bracket. Hell, I'm looking at the state of California. We're going to 12 (laughs) percent. But federal tax, they're going up. Okay, fine. I'm willing to pay my part. The Americans, that the the wealthy of uh, of Americans that's well off, they should be willing to pay their fair share. Oh, man. And so that's was the messaging that President Biden got out, and 80-plus oh, million man. people bought it. Oh, oh yeah. Man. One guy, plus. hey, we're going to make America great. We're going to do this and this and this and this, and we're going to keep... And they didn't buy it. So I'm glad MLB did it. Skip, I wish, look, I think the Masters is next weekend. It's too hard to pull that out. But I wish the SEC championship. So as long as y'all got this, we're not coming back to the... We're not coming back to Georgia. Mm-hmm. We're not coming back to the Mercedes-Benz, no. As long as y'all ah. keep this, we're not coming back. And then 
Cause that's because Skip, remember in '95, they said, "No, nah, we are." Uh, he go another uh, meme. Arizona. I saw, bruh. Pobrecito yeah. Skip Bay. That's his, the, what's the white man's name? Skip. Yeah, Skip Bay. Pobrecito man, he was. He's just, just sitting there, just in a hot mm-hmm. chair, like, just like fuck. And what then, I say. and then, and then Shannon Sharp swole than a bitch. He really is. So he would get get up, slap the shit out of you, Skip Bayless. He'd break his face. I mean, you want me to slap the shit out of you live on television <laughs> in front of all these people? It's children watching Skip Bayless. I slap the shit out of you. <laughs> God damn it. Look, man. I in my mouth, pinche. He really is. Pinche Shannon Sharp. He about to tear up his suit. And another thing. <laughs> and another thing. Skip, little Skip. I, I slapped the shit out of you. You don't want, you want voter suppression. <laughs> With all that goddamn. I slapped the voter suppression up out of you. Skip. Man, you could tell Shannon Sharp saw all the leftist memes. <laughs> he saw all of them. Why should it? Uh, why is it harder to uh, get a gun and it is to vote? Skip, I slapped the shit out of you. <sighs> okay, so this is um, after seeing this and hearing this. If you're hearing it for the first time, go to Shannon Sharp's Instagram, please, and look at the comments under his 1.8 million follower uh, Ooh, what does account. It say? They are all like fake news, just spreading fake yeah, news. Yeah, the Russia collusion. People. That's basically what he was talking about, right? Are on on everything, the whole thing, the whole. Like, the, it's harder to get. It's harder to vote than to get a gun. Like that's just the dumbest shit ever. You need a background check, an FBI investigation, all that ba- bullshit, a waiting period or whatever. The whole thing, right? Uh, the laws being different in these states versus where they went, which was Colorado, which has the same, if not slightly more stringent laws than Georgia, right? So the comments are all like, "This isn't true." Do your fucking research. So people are people are they're waking up. Let's you know we keep saying the phrase "they're waking up," but I think they're actually waking up and they're not taking that dumb shit anymore. Well, it's one thing to have your page flooded with comments. Mm-hmm. Sure, that would represent that people are quote unquote waking up to. Hey, man, that Russia shit is unproven. It was just a hoax. A Russia collusion hoax. They, I don't know if the news networks are now no longer allowed to push the hoax, mm-hmm. the way they push the uh, Charlotte, Charlottesville Nazi fine people hoax. And, I mean, shit, Covington kids, that little boy got, what, 800 million or some crazy shit? Motherfucker should just buy it. Buy, buy CNN. Buy this show. What show is he on? I don't know. Show, Undisputed. Go buy Undisputed on Fox Sports. So, I mean, sh- I, 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 how about this as a question? Do you think all them comments persuaded Shannon Sharp to be like, man, y'all right. My fault. I looked into it. Somebody I saw in one of the comments was like, he looks so uncomfortable saying that, you know? Um, well, it's hard, to, it's hard to read people's mind and it's hard to like look into body language. To me, it sounded like he really believes that stuff. Like, Actually, in retrospect, it might have been Skip. They might have been talking about Skip. Skip Bayless looked under, oh, which he did. <laughs> which he did. Pobrecito Skip. Right. He looked... Look, man, if Skip was black, he probably wouldn't have looked as uncomfortable because this day and age, unfortunately, 2021, Skip is very mindful that he's a white man. <laughs> and Shannon Sharp would slap the shit out of you live on television. Um... Shout out to the what you said page though that you know Ooh, by had, MLB Jesus Christ who had their own opinions and was you know letting it be known on the on the page and um, yeah accurate you know a lot of people most I would say ninety percent of them as I was reading them were like yeah this is so uninformed and you know but it's kind of like the View even like we me and my wife we used to watch the View the View yeah we'd be like okay this is whatever bullshit entertainment these ladies on here talking about uh, it's almost like current affairs okay you get a sense of what's been going on in the world kind of but you know the only person that's somewhat conservative sometimes is uh what's her name mccain megan mccain but even then even then it's like you mean tim Dillon? there's (laughs) good one even then they're hella anti-trumpers yeah uh they're what do they call them never trumpers and and you know it sounds like the shannon sharp is saying so another question is how much influence does shannon sharp have how many people did shannon sharp persuade or who gets their info on the georgia law and its repercussions from the sports talk you're right but when people are 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 maybe not that much that informed and they are hearing that uh the mlb is taking it out of georgia and then also getting a letter from uh, you know governor abbott from texas about their statements they're probably like oh man like 
fuck Texas, you know, and what they said to uh, Shannon Sharp or to Georgia, rather, or to the Rangers organization or whatever, mm-hmm. and they don't listen to anything else because they're like, I'm here for sports, but I'm also getting my news fix here, my political fix here, because that's all I listen to, is sports talk. Man, it's just a it's just a strange time in modern society, the in in, in our country, where everything is politicized, everything is polarizing. Like, you got athlete uh news what do you call it sports talk people chiming in everybody's choosing a side everybody's taking a stance you got chingo bling mr they can't deport us all uh publicly telling people he voted for trump Oof. and pushing this alpha agenda on your motherfucking ass machismo masculine all this masculine. all this all this patriotism uh all this uh america first type of rhetoric Meanwhile, on the same day, you had Charles Barkley, yes, you know, which exactly. was a, a shorter clip. But here, I'll pull that up real quick just because we well, I have... saw that one. So, oh, you did? Play. Okay, yeah. Play it while Chingo's baby bladder goes and uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sorry, sorry. Stop. I crushed it out on the water. <laughs> Nothing to see here. <laughs> he almost fell, everybody. All right. Uh, hold on. Let me just, uh, most of you guys, I'm sure, have already heard this. News, how painful it was. Yeah, but the one thing I took out of that piece. <laughs> sorry, guys, for blowing was... your eardrums. Man, I think most white people and black people are great people. I agree. I really believe that in my heart. But I think our system is set up where our politicians, whether they're Republicans or Democrats, are designed to make us. You know, like such a baby other. bladder guy. So sorry. Their grasp of money and power. They divide and conquer. I truly believe in my heart. Most white people and black people are awesome people, but we're so stupid following our politicians, whether they're Republicans or Democrats. I and their only job is, is hey, let's make these people not <laughs> like cuidado. We don't live in their neighborhoods. We all got money. Let's make the whites and blacks not like, like each other. Let's make rich people and poor people not like each other. Uh, let's, let's scramble the middle class. I truly believe that in my heart. Charles Barkley. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Schultz tweeted, um, like Barkley is a man of the people, like protect him at all costs type of thing. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. And he's been talking about shit like that for a long time. There's a lot of old clips of him talking about how, you know, sounding like a Republican. Yeah. You know, <laughs> or, or sound, or whatever label kind of gets him off the hook slightly like conservative, maybe libertarian where he's like, man, these athletes getting paid a lot. You know, this back in the eighties talking about you getting paid, you know, two, three million, four million to play a, play a game. Like you're a little overpaid and you know, simplifying what the guys bring to sports in the organization kind of, I get it. But he's not wrong in a sense, right? Like, I don't know if the, the point is to value what you're getting versus the messages you might be portraying to your fans and, and how it contradicts a lot of the messaging of you can do whatever you want, right? It's just, it takes hard work. It doesn't take handouts. I wonder if anybody got mad at Charles Barkley. Oh, I'm sure. Charles Barkley? When him and Shaq talk, I mean, Shannon Sharp, he's, he's fucking, he's a fly, right? He's a grain of sand in comparison to when Shaq says something or, or Charles Barkley says something. What kind of shit Shaq be saying? Um, it goes viral. He's pretty smart. I mean, him and it's him and Barkley always have this funny feud on all the pre and post game show stuff. But Shaq will say some smart stuff. You know, some very like not choosing a side, but kind of saying like, "Hey guys, how, how does he talk? You guys need to. I can't do it. Mm. Open your minds. You know, like it, it, ain't, it ain't that. It ain't that simple. You know, but it's also not that com- complicated or whatever. <laughs> mm. I don't know. Yeah, better takes than the yeah. shit Shannon Sharp was saying. Yeah, and and just you know. Y'all just, I mean, I know most of the people listening here <clears throat> got good bullshit detectors. Yeah. And they're able to ask for context. Hopefully, you're you're understanding both sides of an issue. You know, because the truth is going to be somewhere in the middle. You know. Um, you know, they say it's your side, my side, and the truth. And rarely yeah. are we hearing that when it comes to the media. And also, name me one organiza- one federal organization that you trust right now. I'll wait. Not a one. Not a one. From yeah, okay, from FEMA, federal. Okay, from FEMA federal. to so, the you know uh, CDC. Well, you, when you say trust, you mean to a degree that they're going to do their job 100 percent perfect. That or? the message that they're going to put out to the American people is in fact fact. 
and not slightly skewed because, hey, I'm going to lie to you up front, uh, Anthony Banderas Fauci, because we're trying to save the PPP for you know first responders or whatever. And then later I'm going to tell you for the next 10 months after that. Yeah, and that's an example of sometimes you got to lie to the American public. Right. But there was never like a retraction of how much would that lie really cost America or Americans, you know, in the sense mm -hmm. of uh, fear, in the sense of scrambling, in the sense of false hope or whatever the fuck. And there's a lot of examples of it. And, and I just say that because it, we're living in a time where because of the media's inability to garner trust from the American people, we now believe absolutely nobody, which for the most part, you really shouldn't anyway. You should really well, do I, your own research. I think half the country really fucking trusts everything that has to do with the government <laughs> okay. you know because they, they really, i mean 80 million people did vote I mean, for vp <laughs> shannon, biden shannon sharp did just remind us of that statistic um i know a lot of people got their tickets front row seat for the uh, help is here tour <laughs> right ain't that the name of it is, yeah it is, uh, it is president it is, yeah. harris is going to be visiting yes. different counties and, yeah uh, letting them know that we're here to build back better and we're here to help do you, I just noticed this yesterday as I was reading something that they say the Biden-Harris administration. Mm -hmm. Some what, would say the Harris-Biden administration. Right, but, but just on. the duo, you, you never heard, you know, the Trump and, uh, I already forgot his name. Trump-Pence. You never heard really like the Trump-Pence administration or the Obama-Biden. You would hear Obama. Mm -hmm. You would hear Trump. You'd hear Bush. You wouldn't hear the VP is always right there, like fucking, you know, well, attached. You know, some would say that Kamala was the darling, like the number one pick of uh, the CNN CEO, Jeff Zucker. Right. Is that his name? I believe that's his yes. name. Um, you know, so arguably, if that's true, then maybe that's part of the reason why they made sure she was going to be the one, you know. Uh, the dirt this lady's going to have on her, if she actually gains that seat of, pre of you know, president, mm -hmm. that I've just started to kind of dabble into from old California laws to her, um, you know... Uh, behind closed door, maybe getting really smoochy smoochy with oh, some the people. Oh, the relationship. The uh, yeah, her boyfriend was the mayor of San Francisco. The whole like thing, man. The whole thing to get her position of power, and you know, we're just kind of everyone's leaving that out for now. But it eventually will come to light. Yeah, I try not to put too much like that. You know, on conservative Twitter and shit like that. Like people try to make a huge deal out of. Okay, so shit. You know, Kamala was out there getting her little groove on. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it helped her political career. Maybe it didn't. De todos modos, I started noticing and calling it out on Twitter when, with the graphics, when they were campaigning, it'd always be like Kamala would be like more in the foreground or, or they'd have her a little bit bigger on the flyer. And I would say stuff like, hmm, you think they're priming the American public to already start to visualize her as she may take the spot. And man... All these terrestrial radio people that I know, a um, whole bunch of just raza on Twitter, brown Twitter came at me. You know, they were like, uh, no, Chingo, you're reading into things. That doesn't mean nothing. Are you really telling me that just because vice president candidate Kamala Harris is placed in the foreground and she's larger than President Biden, you're really thinking that they're priming us and that that's their plan? I was like... You can't deny the fact that at some point, <laughs> any graphic artist knows that if you put something in the foreground and you make it bigger, you want people to focus more on it. And then they would say, well, they're just trying to highlight the fact that she's the first female person of color vice president, bro. Get your head out of your ass, Chingo. <laughs> I, I am sad to say I used to buy your music. I'm so I regret that I used, to, I used to buy your stuff. I have a Feria team hat. And they get all offended and shit and butt hurt and cry. Some of them actually cry. I believe it. Yeah, because I know somebody. Just tears of soy. Go I on. Know, yeah, I know somebody that was telling me, well, my homie was telling me, he's like, dude, I just came back from my hometown. And dude, there was a guy, your name came up. And man, he's like, he was like literally hurt damn near in tears <laughs> over you, your decision to vote for motherfucking Trump <laughs> in 2020. Hey man, hey man, you ain't got enough things going on in life that's making you cry. Uh, yeah, I mean, goddamn, my bad, bro. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I couldn't go the other way. Uh, and you know, the hoaxes, I get it. Rasa don't be, you know, Rasa is kind of like Shannon Sharp. 
Mm. A lot of us uh, will probably listen to Shannon Sharp more than they listen to Chingo Bling and Rock. <sighs> well, look, that's going to cost Georgia or Atlanta uh, over $100 million. The MLB the, pulling out? Having, yeah, the All-Star game not being in Atlanta. Uh, well, don't they make money in China, too? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just mean, look at it this way. You just voted. You just turned a, a state that's been red for decades blue. Mm -hmm. You got two senators because of your votes. And now, because of whatever the fuck, uh, you just lost 100 mil in a time where you could have really used $100 million it's, in tourism. Yeah. Oh, yeah, in this time. So I hope Atlanta, you're happy with that. Atlanta, huh? man. Atlanta has so many malls and restaurants and clubs and shopping and uh, hotels and all these accommodations. Uh, Delta Airlines is based out of Jackson Hartfield Airport. Mm -hmm. That airport is one of the largest hubs in in America, yeah. period. Like, kind of like Dallas. Like, it's one of those little <laughs> hub stopping points. But um, I believe even more specifically than that, the county in which the game itself would have been held, the mm -hmm. All-Star game, the Major League Baseball All-Star game, they voted all blue. It was mm -hmm. predominantly blue. So that <clears throat> county flipped blue mm -hmm. or whatever, right? And so Segwin. firsthand, I'm sure a lot of them will be like, well, that's just a sacrifice we have to make. Sometimes uh, uh, sports has to step in when they don't like something the government is doing. Meanwhile, they working in China and they not saying nothing about what they doing. Look, again, I, I never claim to be a very intelligent person, much less a political scholar here, but aren't, uh, aren't uh, uh, fucking fields and stadiums and stuff, aren't they built and supported by taxpaying money? Yeah. Should you not leave all that shit at the door when you are an organization or uh, a whatever it is that runs these public you know, events? Who pressured the MLB? Um, to be like, hey, motherfucker, y'all, that shit's coming up. Bitch, you better cancel that event. That's a good question. I read this earlier and I forgot who pressured them. Or, um, or what spy from what country <laughs> in, influenced a person <clears throat> to pressure the MLB? I hear you have friends at MLB. You know, I don't know. It might have been some, some people within the organization that started ruffling some feathers and then pointing out, you know, again, these... Changes are almost no changes at all. Just fucking show who you are, whether you mail in or show up in person. That's it. Now you're going to Colorado, which makes you do that as well. Um, so, so the MLB moved it to Colorado, mm -hmm. who has similar laws to the ones that the Republicans overseen by six white men. Yeah. Just signed. Yeah. Which is you got to show ID and shit like that. Yeah. The only difference is, so you still have to show ID, obviously, in person to verify that you. The mail-in ballots... You only have to show in uh, show ID if you are voting through mail for the first time, and then from there it still goes back to signature uh, verification. Well, it's easier, slightly, but also you still have to show ID the first time. So if you've never done it before and you move from Georgia to Colorado, you're gonna have to show your ID when you vote. So well, there's no difference in a sense. So that is a weird detail. Like it makes you wonder why the fuck the MLB? Why would they do that? Well, I think Governor Abbott and uh, Governor Kemp, I think his name from Georgia, said the same thing. Like you, you guys obviously didn't read the laws uh, in in uh, Colorado versus the ones here in Georgia. It's the same thing. If you're the MLB, I know you got a whole team team of lawyers. Hey, bitch, I need about four of y'all to go read this shit. Yeah, can you go read the three page law on voting? These big corporations got lawyers on deck. Lawyers on lawyers on lawyers on lawyers, and um, somebody should have read it. It, it, like what are these stockholders what are the shareholders right um the board the committee the the chairman like all the different people that for example the okay it's an all-star game so that 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 involves all the teams mm -hmm. um and then you got our governor having to take a stance and be like Hey, MLB, don't bring your shit over here. Yeah, and he's not, you know, he was supposed to throw out the first pitch at the Rangers game, which was at max capacity. And he said, uh, you know, I because of the decision to spread misinformation about voter law, voter ID law in Georgia. I'm not going to make an appearance. I'm not making an at appearance. At the MLB. Don't, uh, uh, Texas is not welcoming any MLB uh, special events in the, in the future or whatever. And I'm like, okay, whatever, dude. Like, that's great on his part. And also the MLB is just like, I don't know. It's as if they don't give a fuck, honestly. It, it, you know, Delta, they, they, they made a stance. They were like, we think that shit is racist. And then all the conservative memes, 
obviously, right? Because I, I see the motherfuckers. They're pointing out the weird hypocrisy, the double standard of, don't I need an ID, ID to, to get on board, get right? On one of your airplanes? <laughs> so I think Tucker Carlson said, if you fly in Delta and you don't show your ID and they make a fuss, I want you to film it and fucking tag me and send it to us. Hell yeah. And, uh, Say it's racist. Yeah, because, you know, whatever that rule is, whatever the left, whatever type of um, the standards, like... The guidelines. Yeah, the, you know, the, the, the cancel, not cancel culture, but like the culture war. If that's the standard, then you got to hold them to their standard. Like when Delta says, we think that that shit they just pulled over there, surrounded by six white men in Georgia, is racist. And we're taking a stance and... What did Delta Airlines do? Did they say we're no longer... I or did, they just made a statement? I guess they made a statement, but so did Coke. I didn't read the statements. I forgot what Coca-Cola said. You know, people are even harder on the Coca-Cola name now. Well, Coca-Cola's going to change their name to Coca-Cola. And it's, it's a bummer because you like some of these products, but that's one of those ones where I would not be buying Coke Zero anymore. Is it a... Yeah, I know, man. I have two Cokes sitting in my motherfucking fridge, and I'm just I'm, staring I'm going, at them hoes. I'm, going to I'm staring at them hoes like, bitch. <laughs> I'm going to Dr. Pepper. So my, my question... Yeah, right? Keep it Texas. My question is this. When companies like Coke and Delta take a Democrat-sided stance, mm -hmm. is that the product of... Their board of directors, meaning the CEO, and like, are they just very involved in politics on the side? Like, yeah, I'm the CEO of Coke, but man, I'm cool with uh, all these Democrat people, and they call me, and we talk, and we hang out, and we're going to go ahead and take this brand in this direction. Does that make sense? It does, and, and I'll say this, and I've heard somebody uh, liken the two of uh, entertainment and uh, the big execs at Coca-Cola, for example, or wherever, pick a fucking company, Pepsi. The way that a entertainment exec can go out of their way to literally make something that's supposed to be funny, not funny, by interjecting what they think should be there. A CEO or somebody on a board of a Coca-Cola or whatever can also go there and, uh, and go out of their way to say, we're ruffling too many feathers. Uh, we need to jump on the ship of this wokeness and, and you know the Democratic side because whatever. And now they have literally sunk their own ship based off of just a, a flash that, in the pan. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like... If the, if it really translates to a big loss and and like a for real boycott, right? Where people are saying, "Bitch, say something about China, then." Ho. Right. If you over here and getting involved in our fucking politics, you making a big bag mm -hmm. over there, and you already know what they doing. So, will it get to the point to where they lose so much money through boycotts and stuff like that? Through the conser conservative cancel culture, <laughs> <laughs> we could cancel too, bitch. Will it get to the point to where like shareholders will somehow demand, hey man, CEO, fired. We need a whole new management all ahead. Bitch, y'all got to, we need new people that are going to look at the Coca-Cola brand and make sure we steer it away from uh, critical race theory mm -hmm. and y'all believe in every fucking uh, white privilege novel or whatever fucking book yeah. that comes out and you want to pay these authors to come and tell white people they're evil and then y'all taking a stance on georgia yeah dude like my thoughts of and this is again personal thoughts of, of comparing what's going on right now and saying that it's jim crow-esque really diminishes the things that happened a few decades yeah. ago yeah they just throw it around like oh it's jim crow-esque yeah dude like the whole it's a trigger word man mm -hmm. when the rape culture thing was going on and people were throwing around rape culture it's really diminishing people that have been through terrible you know instances in their life and so on and so forth all those examples right now because all of us have this ability to whip the phone up the webcam do whatever and talk about it twitch it twitter it snapchat it it's diminishing a lot of things that once had a lot of effect when we're true or when we're accurate versus now where you can just say whatever you want, ruin somebody's life, take away their livelihood, you know, sink companies, um, sink fucking sports teams. I don't know. Hey, so do you have the video Texas Rangers become became the first sports team to play in a packed stadium? Yeah, 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 yeah actually. Uh, this one should uh, definitely play. When was this uh, game? I believe it was yes. What, when's it? Uh, this date's not on there. I think it was yesterday, the day before yesterday. Lo and behold, uh, Texas is the free state. Yeah. And nobody had their motherfucking mask. Fuck on. no. 40,000 people. And guess what? I bet ain't nobody. Well, I don't want to like, I'm not a fucking doctor, but like, you're outside, you're in the sun. You know, I'm not a virologist, epidemiologist, but 
you know, will anybody get sick? Because, you know, people like to talk shit like, oh, look at that church. It's all packed. Look at look at Chingo's comedy show. All packed. Right. And, um, I mean. Well, you could have what's going on in London where police are going into churches and shutting it down because you can't on, gather. On Good Friday. On Good Friday. And then there was another clip. Because, see, the one in London, it was um, it was like a Good Friday thing. And, and the, the cop gets on the mic. Oh, uh, we know it's Good Friday. That's a Boston <laughs> Irish accent. You sound like Mary Quimby from I The Simpsons. Like, yeah, I sound like Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> we know it's Good Friday, but this gathering is unlawful. Yeah. I sound like JFK. <laughs> this gathering is unlawful. We understand it is Good Friday. And there was another clip in Canada where they, they tried the same shit. But this, I think he was Polish immigrant. Uh, oh, you're Nazis. Yeah, you're get out of here. Gestapo's not, yeah. wel- he's not welcome here. Fuck yeah, man. He sounded like Schwarzenegger. Do. He did, a little bit. And uh, he went off. He he backed them out of the... He was like, get out. Yeah. Get out. You're not welcome here. Don't Go now. Don't. Immediately. Get out. Now you're sounding more like Arnold. Yeah, get out. To the chopper. Get out of here. Don't like him back with a... Uh, what's it called? A, um, a warrant. A warrant. He says, you ain't got no warrant. Get the fuck out of he here. He said, this is uh, Passover. This is, you know, it's, um, it's Good Friday. I forget what it was. But, dude, think about... Passover, yeah. Yeah, think about... On the holiest of days. Think about the cops who get the assignment. Hey, man, Rob, you ready, bro? We, how, how are we going to tell these people they got to get the fuck about this church? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, man, shit. is that really the kind of uh, you know, shit you're trying to stir today on a Monday? And I'm like, I don't know. We, dude, we went, we went to um, the Easter ser- one of the Easter services at Second Baptist and um, my daughters, my wife, everybody was, you know, dressed beautiful. I was handsome than a son bitch. Uh, we were a gorgeous little brown family, thriving in this beautiful country. And we had a good old time, man. It was packed. With your white Tino privilege. White Tino coconut privilege. Uh, the band killed it. I think we gave um, the lead guitar, one of the lead singer dudes, Ojo, mm. because uh, they killed it. And then Homeboy, he came down. He was by the coffee. Uh, they got a coffee shop in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and way, and he was talking to this lady, and and we're in line waiting for our coffee, and then we're like, not starstruck, but it's like, tell him he did a good job. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then we leave, and then there's a fender bender. Oh no! And it was homeboy. Le- oh, no. Le- 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 He's getting out his car and still got his suit on and shit. But uh, Easter was packed. It was great. Uh, got together with the family, and it feels like overall, in general. Mm-hmm. People a little bit more lax about El Virus. In the beginning, it was rubber gloves. You got to run into the to the, to the the grocery store. You don't want to touch the debit card thing. Uh, you, you know, you extra paranoid when pumping gas. You make sure you don't touch nothing. You you pulling the glove off next. You know what I mean? No, Pachingo, I don't know what you mean. In the beginning. <laughs> I'm just kidding, yeah. In the very beginning, right? You take In the beginning. Extra. You, you holding your breath. You're paranoid of elevators. I remember... Sound like Lefty Lair right now. <clears throat> I know. I remember. No, seriously. Like, yeah. I remember in the beginning of El Virus, you know, you'd hear stuff where it's like, maybe it's, you know, based on this country or this city. Why is New York doing so bad? And people trying to, is it because they have more big apartment buildings? Is it shared AC? Oh, right. Um, is it, um, what was it? The shared AC thing. Oh, these big buildings have elevators. Are they spreading through the elevators? So you have all this stuff in the in the back of your mind. But now, fast forward, Easter 2021. It's like families are gathering, people hugging, shaking hands. You know, you're doing meet and greets and shit. And uh, you autographing stuff. You're taking pictures with people. Uh, well, not on Easter. I'm talking about just sure. in, in general, people. Fe- I mean, look at the damn Texas Stadium. 40,000 people. <clears throat> Freedom, brother. I wonder how other states, if their stadiums are going to be full. Like, well, California, are they allowed to have big sporting events open? Certain Hmm. states. It depends on the state. Yeah. But like, 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 does California have MLB games? Does California have MLB games? That's a good question because I remember them referencing they're still doing something at Dodger Stadium. I don't know what the capacity is going to be, though. Yeah. um, Some of the patrons or anybody that, you know, uh, all the Red Pill Thea people, let us know because I know a lot of y'all are from Cali. Let us know. Let us know. Well, Let shit, us- Houston, UFC uh, coming back to Houston sooner than they usually do because they're going to go to the Toyota Center and they can pack it out. They fought them at first because they were going to do the first uh, UFC event with people. And I guess Sylvester Turner and the whole people were like, nah. And I'm just like, why? So 
so what happened? They turned. They no. They said no. This was about a month ago. So they're doing it in Florida first. I think Tampa or somewhere around there. Uh, I think that's the Masvidal fight. Masvidal and uh, he's having a rematch for the belt against Usman. And now it's uh, Leon Edwards and Nate Diaz headlining the Houston card with a bunch of other good people on that card, which was, you know, it came weeks after them initially saying no for whatever reason. It was shortly after Greg, uh, Governor, Gap, Governor Abbott had lifted the mask mandate and people were still pissed about it. So are they going to let Toyota Center be at full capacity? From what I understand, yeah. You know what the, you know what the, uh, the globalists are thinking? They like... Y'all gonna let all them people gather without the vaccine uh, passport? Dude, it's too fucking late. I know that's still. A, I know that's a thing, and people that's are really car- pushing that's for the that. Carrot on a stick. They, they want. Ca- they want to sell you back your freedom. That fucking carrot on a stick is a baby carrot at this point in a lot of states. Well, yeah, that's why they mad at Texas and Florida. That's why Absolutely. They, that's why they calling us Neanderthals because it's like, bro. I told my wife yesterday. I was like, hypothetically speaking, you know, the shot is really really good all of them are really good and you know overall in general they they sincerely just want to get this i don't know herd immunity or they just want everybody vaccinated like let's just say hypothetically with all good intentions you know that's why they so hell-bent on wait you can't open up And then we can't tell them, bitch, do you want your freedom back? Here's your fucking freedom pass. Sign up. Get in line. It's the new normal. We building back better. And y'all over there opening up. Now we ain't got no leverage. And now people were already hesitant. And now they not getting a shot. And now we not getting what the fuck we want. And it's like, is it all out of good intentions? You know, I don't know. I'm not a mind reader. Shout out Gabe, big fan of the podcast, sent me the message uh, or an observation of of the sort that was like, what if, um, you know, keeping this whole COVID thing super, el virus, super high in your heads and, and, and you know, the fear really high Mm -hmm. is to solidify some more of this mail-in balloting, voting for the Mm -hmm. future. Mm -hmm. I'm like, "That's, that's a good observation. Like, yeah, possibly. I mean... Not to mention you're already so pissed at Georgia and other states that are going to be changing, not changing, just making sure that it's less likely that somebody could cheat. They could just verify the person and vote that's it yeah that that's one of the uh one of the things that gets highlighted in all of this is the relationship between state governments and federal government so for example when you have a texas uh governor abbott or a florida governor DeSantis, and then you have a federal government that kind of clashes with hey bitch that's too much fucking freedom Mm -hmm. People getting too comfortable, you know, we're going to tell you it's because we don't want to surge, which I've been informed ALC said surge is a racist word. We don't want any spikes, um, you know, or is it really, hey, man, we trying to get everybody on this app because big tech are the ones like so many big industries can benefit from these lockdowns, like so many different people, politicians, you know, power, like different people use this crisis to benefit them whatever their agenda is whether it's um you know you're amazon and you kind of don't like brick and mortar in the way Mm -hmm. um let's say you sell vaccines or you one of these big pharma you know you kind of want to sell you want to get rid of them because we done made them all right i don't want to get stuck with all these shots um you know if you're big tech and you want everybody to be on the app so we could further study your behavior and try to sell you stuff and advertise to you and keep you as a customer they might want a little app on your phone. Yeah, man. The unfortunate part of it all is that it's supposed to be about choice, right? It's about to be your ability to choose whether you want it or not and let the free market, again, decide what happens. If you are so confident that this is important, you need to take uh, la vacuna and whatever the fuck, and you have this many people that voted for a person who was all about it as well, then you're going to make your slice of the pie, all right? You're going to make your amount of money back and then some for sure because you made it. You already know a shit ton of people want it. The rest of them, don't need it, don't want it, ain't going to buy it. You shouldn't be on to you to force everybody to take it. Well, I guess, you know, some people would like that this uh, shot passport, yeah. you know, the little app on your phone, you, you know, your papers, your yeah, shot papers. Sure, sure. Don't get caught out here without your shot papers. <laughs> Let me find out y'all out here with papeles chuecos and shit, fake ass shot papers. Man, some people ain't got car insurance. They're going to have some fucking papeles de tu vacuna, man. Yeah, yeah you don't be out here undocumented. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You got to make sure you have all shot documentation. Um, I know some people want to get them at the pulga. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> so it, 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 it's tricky, right? Because it's like some people want to use it as if you would like to return to your life and you want to attend concerts, we're going to need you to get the shot. And then we need you to have proof of shot. 
and don't worry, we're not going to dig into your medical, you know, there's still the privacy there and whatever the fuck. But meanwhile, you got Texas Stadium already wide open. Texas is one of the free states. Florida's free. Imagine if we were blue states already. They would have just fell in line with New York and Cali and said, bitch, listen to the federal government. We don't need to go against what they talking about. We would have been just like Sylvester Turner statewide. Don't bring, don't be bringing y'all's economic influx over here. Even though Abbott don't want MLB over here. Yeah. It, um, it should be one of those things too, maybe where, and I'm sure it is. I mean, it is like this. When you go to a game, you're, you're accepting the liability of going to this live event. You can't sue the venue, you know, if you get a cold or some other flu or whatever. Same thing with this. If you got, if you got your vacuna and you go there and then somebody doesn't, you have either signed or have, uh, have accepted the liability of going to an event or you could potentially get sick. Okay. That's your choice to do that. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Or you can have what's going on. I think it was in Australia. There was a video of a, of a pregnant mother who has a cop, has two cops knock on her door and arrests her for a, a post she made on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what, yeah. What did she post? It was an it was an event. It was it might have been a uh, a uh, protesting type of event for las vacunas, and uh, under new law or whatever, she yeah. was she broke the law by the type of post she made. So, do they have the right to protest over there? I don't know what their laws are. All I know is that what the clip was that the cop kept saying that she was inciting, and she was like, "Inciting what? Inciting what? What law did I break?" I made a Facebook post, and they literally put her in handcuffs in her pajamas and take her up out of the house by force. Man, it sounds like everybody, man, start paying attention. Maybe we'll, we'll post some of this stuff on the what did you sure. said because uh, the comedian Jason Roos. Uh, Rouse, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. The Canadian dude, he's based out of Austin now. He sends me these clips of how insane Justin Trudeau's Canada, because they left. I don't know what the political parties are called, but he's the lefty uh, president that they have, prime minister, whatever the fuck he is. And they getting real extreme, man. Like there was a dude at the airport in Canada. He was required to quarantine or some shit. And he was like, uh, I know my rights. That's unconstitutional for Canada. I'm going to my house. Fuck mm -hmm. y'all. And they literally um, had like shut down a highway by his house. It was like six, 60 cops. Like they went all out to go get this dude. 60 cops? Something oh my God. crazy. But okay. I'll start posting these on the what, at what did he said Instagram and all that. Um, because the point of all that is this. These are Western westernized countries canada is our neighbor just above us um what we saw in great britain on good friday these are supposed to be kind of western even though it's europe right it's kind of a western culture Aust australia arguably i mean i know they're like down under and shit but um and i know it's apples and oranges so i don't know their constitution i know they're not allowed to have a gun but are they allowed to protest um what exactly was the warrant do they require warrants over there i don't know their laws yeah but it's like what did the, what was the what was the charge what was the law what what was it because of a tech thing because of the post or because the, the post was proof that she was out there protesting at a park right i don't know crazy man. um let's let's what do we send these people out on chingo what do we send our great fans out on out on do you have any fan questions do we I don't know. Check the what I just saw on the. Oh yeah, you got the. Where's your phone? Oh yeah, yeah. Check the uh, check the stories and uh, let's see what uh, what it do. What it do, baby? Okay. You, you check the what did you say stories? Yeah. Juan moment. Juan moment. I just saw on your notes you put fan question. I sure did, man. Is that a fucking mistake? Are there any? What are the questions at? Oh, let me see them. You want me to do it on your phone? Sure. Okay. I don't know if there's any good ones in there. Uh, vaxxers and vacuna, any car. <sighs> Whoa, not reading that one. <laughs> uh, is the U.S. dollar still worth anything? And if it is, why? It might be. It's got to be worth something still. Because we're the baddest bitch. Uh, someone said, how did how did the wife react to you talk, taking the red pill? Is COVID the excuse for more voter ID laws? That's Gabe. How much hate do you get from the blue pill Latino community, if any? Um, Obama's admin. 
No, I don't know who that is. Obama's admin, Ray LaHood, has been charged. Have you heard anything? Okay, how much hate do you get from the blue pill Latino community? Um, Facebook has made it really hard to block people. <laughs> They've made it really hard. Like, Facebook keeps changing their shit. So I have the little business suite, which is the new Facebook pages, mm -hmm. where you can run your fan page account. They make it so difficult to post to your story on Facebook. Where? Hard to ban people. So basically, you still get trolls. You still get people that sound like Shannon Sharp. Yeah. You know, they really believe. Pero chingo, they signed the law surrounded by six white men. You know, you need to sit at the kids' table if they fucking bamboozled you with that one. Um, but I understand, man. I used to believe a whole bunch of the fake news. So I try to be patient with the shit. I try to ignore it. Um and I think on Instagram, I think I already probably done blocked most of the people because they're not really around as much. Uh, TikTok, every once in a while, you'll get some. But again, it's social media. And if you're not keeping an open mind, you're not actually tuning in to the podcast, you're basing your whole fucking opinion off of God knows what. A so, clip that was cut up 10 months ago, I don't know. six I, months ago. There's really no telling yeah. where they get their hate from me. Maybe they just think if you vote Republican, you're racist and you want to be white. I yeah. think a lot of people are that simple. Um, and again, I was, uh, you know, I was an anti-Trumper. I was a never-Trumper. I was a lifelong Democrat. Now I'm a walk-away Democrat. Yo, so the lady that we went on the uh, river boat ride yes. with, um, she posted her clip. I got to send it to you. Ooh. Yeah, great e editing. It was amazing. Well done. But uh, yeah, man, that's episode number 42. That is all we have for today. What are they? And uh, we're going to record some more ASAP. Shout out to the patrons, man. Uh, give us feedback. Have you told anybody about the podcast? What did they tell you? Did they tune in? Did they not? You know, we want this thing to spread. Because um, I think we discussed some pretty interesting, important stuff. You know, like, don't get all your news from one one biased partisan side because they say that shit leads to brain damage. <laughs> it leads to brain damage. You're start malito. You fucking your brain up. <laughs> Shout and, out Midnight. So listen to Red Pill Tamales. You know, we try to uh, talk about what Shannon Sharp was trying to say. Yeah, we try <laughs> to talk about everything, put our own our own spin on it, just like, you know, people do on his show or whatever. But it's in a way that uh, hopefully it's more digestible, more yeah. relatable, makes more sense. Give you the hottest takes. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And that is all, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in. Y'all take care. Have a great week. I will see you. Killeen, Texas this weekend and then we drive to lubbock right after clean lubbock texas this weekend tell a friend i'll see you soon Sass. oh and also remember if you're part of the tia we'll see you on friday for a bonus rpt which uh, is every friday and then a chingo chat every monday if you're also part of the uh, patreon otherwise we won't see all the huge you know majority of you guys until next wednesday that's right peace out